Hey harmonizers, welcome to this video with Secret where we're gonna use the Pivo today to try to film this video for you guys. We're gonna do some groundwork. It's a really windy, kind of spooky day. So we're gonna see how she can handle it and learn uh, hopefully through all of this going on. Hey, 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 that was rude. All right, so here we go with the Pivo tracking us here. And we're going off, we're gonna do a little bit of basic groundwork first. And I like to start usually by walking my horses a little bit and getting them to shape around me. And something pretty cool actually happens. So sometimes what happens when a horse comes in and they can be a little bit on an adrenaline high, in this case, because it's a little bit windy, so the horses are all acting a little bit crazy. So then since she's calmed down, then sometimes they crash off of that adrenaline and then they want to lay down. So she's not trained to lay down yet on cue, but I saw the signs that she was looking like she thought about laying down to roll because probably because she's coming off of that adrenaline high. And uh, even though she didn't look super high in adrenaline, she I could just tell that she was starting to relax and then gave her a cookie while she was down. So that was pretty cool that she did a little lay down with me and eventually we will get to asking that on purpose. But that is totally the easiest way to do it is to just kind of allow them, like notice the signs and allow them to go down and reward them for being down. So here I'm working a little bit on moving her shoulders a little bit and you can see she's being a little bit sticky. I'm trying to get her to cross that front leg over, which she just did on that last step there and trying to get her to stay a little bit more stationary with her hind end. So I'm giving her a little scratch and a little rub there and then we'll end up trying that again to uh, try to get her to clean that up a little bit. And uh, it's a lot for her to kind of take in when there's distractions and things like that going on. So I'm trying to start to get a little bit more particular with her, asking her to actually cross those front legs. And I'd like that hind end to be a little bit more stationary. And even though she's still pretty basic in her training, we're just doing the foundational stuff. I want to start to get a little bit pickier with her so that way she understands that there's going to be progression and we're not just doing the same thing over and over again. I'm going to teach you new things and different things and uh, we're going to you know, start to have a whole other level of refined communication that we're going to do together. So we worked a little bit on that and then I did a bunch of other things with her too, but I didn't want to make a ridiculously long video. So I thought I would just do a uh, kind of show you little clips here and there. So here I'm asking her to move her shoulder to the left. There she gave me the little cross leg step with the front end, so I stopped and gave her a little scratch there. And uh, I'll, I'll get to some sideways here in a minute, and then I'll also show you guys a little bit of her trotting. And uh, she's super, she's actually pretty lazy when it comes to being a thoroughbred. She's uh, not super goy, but then again, she hasn't been trained to be super go, 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 go. We try to keep things pretty calm, pretty relaxed. I want to keep her thinking and sticking with me the whole time. So while I'm doing this and I'm moving around a little bit, I'm actually pretty impressed with the Pivo and its tracking ability. It's been doing a really good job of me kind of staying not quite so close to it like I did with my bridalist ride on my Pivo review video on my last video. It was, it, you know, didn't, always keep up when I was cantering by when I was at close speeds. Here I'm moving slower and I'm staying, you know, at least 20 feet away from it. And it's doing a really good job of kind of keeping her in the center of the screen. So I'm really actually liking that. And just a reminder that if you guys do decide to get yourself your very own Pivo, I'd really appreciate it if you use my affiliate link because they give us a small commission and it doesn't cost you guys any more to use that link. So anyways, that's in the description if you choose to go and do that. We would thank you for that. So here I'm moving on to doing a couple more little basic skills with her before we get into the sideways stuff. We do a little head down, which is the first kind of cue that they need to understand before I actually put a cue to laying down on cue. So she's got her head down cue really, really easy and then picking up her feet, also a super good task for her to do. Uh, there she's actually standing a little bit awkwardly. 
but she still managed to keep her foot up for me. She was a little bit kind of uh, coiled with her body. And when she's jigging around like that, I try not to make a big deal about it. I just correct her sure where she needs to stand. And then I'm giving her a little scratch and I want her to understand that we're just standing still so I can go back and rub on you. So all important things to know how to do. She does pick up her feet and does get her feet trimmed by the farrier. But this is different having to ground tie while I do that to have that level of patience to stand there. It's actually interesting now watching the video back as I do this with you guys is I feel like in the last couple weeks she's actually grown a bit and seems to have filled out a little bit. I'm noticing that her butt looks rounder and she's just looking a little bit bigger in her body which is nice because she was looking um, pretty small before so it's nice to see that she's growing a little bit. Uh, her parents are actually quite tall so I'm surprised that she's still relatively short. I think she's, I, you know what, I'm going to have to actually measure her. I would guess that she's probably 14 two-ish. I'm just totally guessing though. So I'm going to have to take her out and actually measure her. Maybe she's 14 three hands or 15 hands. So anyways, here we are working a little bit on our sideways. And so I want to make sure that even though she's learning sideways towards me, that we still keep a really good sideways away from me cue. And uh, sometimes they can get a little bit confused like there see how she just kind of bumped into me She's not trying to be rude or be bad She's just assuming that I want her to come towards me because that's what we've been working on in our last sessions so we were doing a little bit more sideways away stuff and Then of course working on our sideways towards so I'm trying to get a further away cue <laughs> just kind of silly girl there it starts to paw and she looks at me like Hey, why are you holding this stick up in the air? It's like, hey, secret, I'm trying to tell you to go sideways towards me. And she's like, hey, what you doing over there with that stick up in the air? And I'm like, remember, it means sideways towards me. She's like, oh, yeah, sideways towards you. Got it. So she's doing that pretty nicely now. I like to see the front legs going with the back legs. She got a little bit in front there, so I'm cueing her to back up. And I'm using the little dressage whip there just to give me some more reach but I'm definitely not using it with the intent to scare her or hurt her or anything like that and you can see she's not uh, scared of that in any way shape or form so we do our little sideways towards and she actually did a really good job and then I want to make sure we still keep our sideways away so I'm asking her to do that out and away from me there uh, which she does a much better job at this time isn't getting quite so confused about coming into me. So I've got to make sure my body language is super clear about am I driving or am I drawing? So I'll just show you in a second here. I switch sides and she does the same thing where she's like, what? Do you want my bum? You want me to sideways towards you? And I'm like, no secret. We're going sideways away from me. She's like, what? You want my bum? And I'm like, no secret. We want to go away from me, sweetie. So then she's like, oh, got it. Okay sideways and of course as she starts to get it I start to give her a verbal cue where I'll say usually good 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 or I'll use the word nice so that way they understand they're on the right track I just want them to do it a little bit more and then that way she understands okay yeah like I'm doing the right thing here and if she's not hearing me telling her uh, you're doing a good job or something like that then she'll search for a different answer and then of course our sideways towards started to get a little in front of me there and came a little bit forward so I just block her and ask her not to do that uh, she has a little bit of a habit of going forward so you can see I'm tapping her back with the stick and then asking her to come forward again or sorry not come forward but come towards me so we'll definitely keep working on that and trying to get her to be a little bit uh, more lateral and not quite so much forward but that's a really good start to where she's at with that so then here's a little look at the circle. So I thought this would be an interesting thing for the Pivo because it, it's a circle. So it's like you're coming in around and it's like, ah, you're over there. And we're trotting, so we're not going super fast, but we are moving. And the thing is moving around. It's a little bit, a little bit motion sickness there for you. But it, it does, for the most part, do a pretty good job. But of course, it's set to follow the horse. It's not set to follow the human. So it's kind of a cool feature on Pivo where you can choose horse, human, or I think just motion in general. And so I have it tracking the horse. So interesting that, of course, it followed her. And 
I ended up out of the frame there for a little bit. So I'm going to send her out again and you can see she is not a super fast thoroughbred. She's, you know, her trot's pretty slow and pretty even keel for what we're doing. I'm just doing a little disengage there, asking for her hind end, a couple little switches of direction. And really when I'm doing these types of things, I'm, it's kind of a balance of sometimes I'm trying not to use my rope at all because I want to see, you know, how would you respond if we were at liberty and there was nothing attached. And sometimes I do want to use that rope because I'm teaching her to follow a feel of that rope, which is important for when eventually we're going to go ride. So with Secret only being two years old, uh, she just turned two in April. I do not plan on sitting on her until next year when she's three years old at the earliest. And even when I start three-year-olds, I don't do a ton of riding work. I keep it pretty short and definitely low impact because I want to make sure she has time to grow and I don't want to interfere with what's going on in her body. So we know that the horse's skeleton uh, doesn't really fully grow until I think it's, uh, well, there's different bones that finish at different stages. So we just want to make sure that she's fully grown. But in general, four years old, five years old are the time when they're ready for more impactful stuff. So I hope you enjoyed watching Secret. Thanks, guys.